Hello, in this video we're going to be looking at a few easy ways to add font icons to the Beaver Builder themes menus. In the first example we'll be looking at these directional icons which we can add to existing links and then we'll move on to linkable social icons and how we can style these. The important thing is that we're doing this all without a plugin and we're going to make sure that these are also accessible and friendly to those who use screen readers like the visually impaired. To go along with this video, I shall have a blog post where I shall include all of the examples that you'll need so you don't need to take too much notice of everything I'm doing in the video. And also within this post, I am adding a graphic which shows us all the different header options that are in the Beaver Builder theme. So you can see where if you're adding social icons, they will appear if you select different Beaver Builder theme options. Now the reason we don't need to worry about using a plugin is that the Beaver Builder theme comes with the Font Awesome library already preloaded. It's used in the theme, for example here this search icon is Font Awesome. So this allows us to go over to the Font Awesome website at fontawesome.io forward slash icons and choose from over 600 icons here. And really in, in our simplest terms it's just a matter of going selecting one of these and taking a piece of code. But I'm actually going to add on to that as we'll see when we go through each of our examples. But there are a few things just to note on this. First is that uh, because the Beaver Builder theme is taking the style sheet from here and loading it into its theme it means that it may not always be completely up to date with when the font awesome are adding some new icons and the best way to be able to work out whether you've got the latest and can use all the icons is actually to go over to your site and uh, take a look at the source code which I do by right clicking and going view page source which I would do on Windows and if we scroll down a little bit to where all the style sheets have been loaded we'll You'll see here there we are and we get the version number which is on 4.6.2 so if we pop back over to the font awesome site we'll see that we are on 4.6 uh, in fact 4.6.3 so we're just slightly out but what it tells us is that we can use all of the icons that are available to us here just before we move on to our first menu let's take a look at the icons page itself it's well organized into different sections so the section that we'd probably be looking at for our menus are right at the bottom directional icons and brand icons uh, down at the very bottom which include our social ones and we can also search at the top here so let's just take one example let's uh, take one from the first menu that we're going to use which I know is called angle down there we are so angle down is what we're looking for so what we do under the simplest circumstance our first menu that we're going to do with directional icons all we'd need to do is to select the icon we wanted click on it and this will open up a new page with the snippet that we need and this snippet is this one over here and it's i class equals fa fa angle down now this aria hidden true is something that we want to keep for all of our examples it's for web accessibility again it's about screen readers it's about not making screen readers read these fonts that are there they're only used for presentational purposes for sighted people so it doesn't have to be read by screen readers and that's what that's about so in our first example all we'd be needing to do is to literally cut and paste these so let's head over to our WordPress menus and what we need to do, I'll just put this on the front page to make it easier to see. Uh, we can go to the menus through various ways as I just gave you a quick glimpse. We can go through the customizer and menus are available there. Or we can actually go from the front end and select menus from there. Uh, but typically I'm in the back end and I'm going to appearance and then menus. Now I suggest that we go this route first because here we have screen options available to us. Whoops, let's just get that there. And we need to turn on at least one of these for our examples that we're using here. And it's this one, link target. If I just turn that on, you can see. Uh, it's just added that and that's really because we're going to be using for social icons we are going to be needing to select some custom links and we'll need to be able to link them to somewhere uh, the others aren't going to be needed 
for the examples in this video, but I'm going to do a second one where we'll need to enable uh, the CSS classes. Um, title attributes, that's, uh, if you don't know about this, I'll just quickly cover it. If you're turning that on, it allows you to put some text in here, which will appear when you hover over a menu. Now, for accessibility, it's generally not a good idea to add title attributes. It's just more junk for screen readers to have to read. But, you know, if you can't explain your link, or oh, it doesn't make sense, or tell somebody where they're going for the site, people maybe it's worth adding it to give a bit of information about what's going to happen when someone clicks on a link but generally I would avoid it unless completely necessary uh, don't need to worry about this and description is something which uh, depends on whether a theme supports it the beaver builder theme doesn't naturally support it would need a bit of code to make that come on but basically it adds again another field where you can add some text say underneath the link to further explain what that's about so that really covers the screen options as I say we don't need those on I'll leave these two on over here so here's our first menu really it is just literally a case of taking the code that we select from here and pasting it alongside a label so I'm just going to do this by adding one more to let's do it to our home there so you can see the ones I'm using that angle down uh, whoops I can get rid of this now and uh, and get rid of this and we can go in there and we just put it I'll put a space in here and then paste this in and save our menu and when we refresh the page we'll see it's added this directional one down here now I'll just point out something here that I often use this one and this particular angle down one it's because it's already used uh, by the beaver builder theme so if we're going into responsive menus and we've got drop downs here you'll notice that it's the same matching icon to this. So if you want your designs to sort of match up with what's already in the Beaver Builder theme, that's probably the one to pick to indicate that there's a drop down. Um, I don't want to stretch this video out too much, but I mean, maybe just something to say on drop downs. I mean, I think uh, Jacob Nielsen, one of the usability and accessibility experts has been testing drop downs for a long time and generally they don't work very well. I think November 2000, he was first writing about it and it's been a consistent thing that it's better to avoid drop downs this is entirely different when it comes to mega menus i think in 2009 he said that mega menus worked very well those are the big menus which are now available in uh, the beaver builder theme so that's great news there but there's not much i can say about this first menu if we look down here sometimes you may need to put a little bit of extra space between the items over here and you can easily do that by using a non-breaking space so i've just Put this in here which is ampersand n b s p semicolon this will force a little bit of space let's just see and we'll see that it just forces in a little bit of extra space if we need it uh, without having to go to any code when you come back you'll notice that it's disappeared but it still holds all the same so that's it that's uh that's really how you can add icons there there's no problem we've already got as we mentioned the area hidden in there so all this extra presentational stuff won't get in the way of screen readers and we can use these for whatever icons we want to use so we'll move next on to the social icons so through the magic of video editing we have our first set of social icons up on the menu bar over here and this is the simplest one where it actually is taking on the styling that's applied to the navigation anyway so you can see the hover over effect is the same as has been set for each of the links over here so let's take a look at the back end and how that looks so as mentioned before when we're using social icons we need to use our custom links here so when we want to create a new one what we need to do is is to open up the custom links add in the URL to our social network and then we are pasted in this code here and it has something a little different to that uh, first menu code and different to what we had over at font awesome let me go over to the blog post so I can show you a snippet a bit closer here so what's been added is this fa dash lg which is a large it's a way and I should show you on this if we go over to the font awesome examples over here we can see that we can increase by adding this at uh, the size of our icons and we need to really do that with the social icons if we leave them as we did in the first example 
the natural size they look kind of too small and in fact it's actually quite difficult although you can play around with it to make it look good if we go twice as large so LG seems to be about the best when we're just not messing around with CSS that probably fits the best uh, and right back to the code again and the second part of this code that's added is this and this is the part that gets missed out and is important to accessibility because if we look to our site here and if I remove the CSS from our site I'm not going to be able to show you how wrong it would look but you can just get the sense of it here if we hadn't have added this second part of code what we would see here is blanks here we just see the dots and we would see blanks there would be no title written here so screen readers wouldn't know what's going on the partially sighted would not know what is happening so this is why we've added this extra bit of code and it really is quite simple uh, back to the blog post okay so all we're doing is this span tag I've given it a class and I've given it some inland styling so we're positioning it to absolute and we're sending it off to the left and to the top. Effectively, we are taking this label that we put in for Facebook and sending it off our browser so sighted people don't see it, but screen readers can read it. And that's all that's happening there. So we'll take a quick look at our example number two, and I think we're gonna need a bit of video magic, so I'll just pause here. And here's our example number two. So nothing much to say about this. It's almost exactly the same as what we had in the first example. All we're doing is using uh, some different icons. So the other one said square on them. Let's have a look again at the blog post so we can see that better. So with these other ones, we were using uh, Facebook square that is my example there and they were all called square and in this one we're not using the square so we're just showing the icons as they are so that really is example two and I don't need to go into any more detail so we'll go on to example three next so a bit of a pause again and here's example three and we've just added a bit of inline styling to color this so if I have a look over at the blog post we'll see uh, that all we've needed to do there is to add in some color here actually within the icon itself within the tags there and I've also in the blog post here added all the other brand colors which you could exchange these for to get the effect that we've got over here okay so that's example three and uh, we'll next move on to example four where we start to use a bit of CSS and here's example four and it is actually exactly the same as example two except that we are not needing to increase the size of our icons because we're doing this through CSS so uh, looking at our blog post over here oh, I've not added it because there's no need but the, basically it's the same as example two um, and all we're doing now is doing a little bit of CSS styling and I shall just bring over my code editor so you can see what's happening here. again I've included these in the post so you don't need to pay too much attention but what we're doing is we're isolating the FA that we've got in there and giving that a background color and I've also added in a little bit of an opacity effect for the hover over effect which I've included there and there's one little thing added which is a little one pixel jump effect which you notice when you're using any of the buttons in the beaver builder theme that it does a little jump to make it button like oops it's not showing actually <laughs> for that it's not showing but it does work uh it's just obviously this is playing up but it gives a little jump effect and is in my css so once we've got into that we could just do a basic styling with this where we actually isolate the uh, fa on here and add some styling uh, or we can actually go a bit further with this so if i just remove the color from this and this is in the second example and i shall remove the border radius which made it round and I'm going to turn on now individual icons so we can individually style these because they've all got their own classes there we go and that was the final example because we can isolate the FA FA Facebook and the same with Twitter or YouTube or any of these and then we can individually style these by adding a border or a color and whatever what whatever backgrounds we like uh, you can further experiment with this but the code is all included uh, here if you just want to take this and use that 
and I think that pretty much covers it. It's been quite a long video on it, but I'll just explain that I am moving on to a second video where for those circumstances where you haven't got an icon and you may need something there where you might need to use a background image instead. And also the circumstance where you might not want all of this mess. So in the second video, I shall go on and show a way where we can do most of it in CSS and keep this clean looking and also add background images. Anyway, I think that's the end of the video. Thank you very much for listening to me. It's been a long one. I hope it's been of use to someone. And thanks very much. Bye-bye.